So for the end of this section, guys, uh, section 4.5, this time we want to be able to do both of these. We want to be able to find indefinite, which we've been doing, but also definite integrals with u substitutions. Remember, definite integrals are different. See, definite integrals, these find the area bounded by the function, the x-axis, and whatever those x values are, a and b. Indefinite integrals just find the original function if we're given the derivative. So definite is area, indefinite, finding the original function. Here are the methods that we should use to integrate in this order. Sometimes you can just integrate, and you don't have to do any work. For example, if I gave you the integral of radical x times x plus 1, you don't need a u substitution on that. Do you see why? Because I can just multiply this out and get terms. This would be the integral of x to the 3 halves plus x to the 1 half. There's no u substitution necessary. So just because we learned a new trick about how to do a u substitution doesn't mean you need to do that every time. Only when it's necessary. The next thing you should do is simplify to get terms. I actually kind of went too early on that one. That's what this is. This is showing you how you can multiply this out to get terms. If given a function that is simple to multiply or divide. So this one is simple to multiply. We could have one that's simple to divide. If I had something like this, this is simple to divide. It would be the integral of x divided by x to the 1 half is x to the 1 half. 1 divided by radical x is x to the negative 1 half. Once again, I did not need a u substitution. It was simple to divide, and now I could integrate. A u substitution is really only our last option. If nothing else works, then we do a u substitution. We especially do this with trig when the angle is other than x. So if our angle is anything else than x, we have to do a u substitution. What does integration find again? Well, it finds the original function. Once again, it finds the area under the curve. It can also find the average value, meaning the average y value. That was on our last quiz. That formula for average value, it's just the integral, but what do we put in front? Does anybody remember? Mm -hmm. 1 over b minus a times the integral of the function. That will tell us the average y value. All right. For right now, though, we're worried about this definite integral with a u substitution. I'm going to look at this first problem. First I see, can I just simplify it? Am I allowed to multiply through if this is getting cubed? No. Can't do that. So what are we going to have to do then? Well, what's u going to equal? x squared plus 1. That's our last option. The derivative now, the derivative of x squared is 2x dx. Looking at our problem, we just have an x dx. And right here would be the u. So I have to multiply both sides by a half. So now I have the x dx. This in circle x dx is going to get replaced with the 1 half du. The box right here, the rectangle, that's just our u, so it's getting cubed. Here's the new part. These numbers here are x's. I want to change them into u's. So if this is an x value of x equals 0, what would it be as a u value if u is x squared plus 1? 1. So now this number becomes a 1. This top number of 1, it was an x value of 1. What will u be when x is 1? 2. So now this is a 2. 
So now I no longer go back to X's. I'm just going to stick with U's. So I'm going to have one half. What do I get if I integrate? Add one and divide. What is it? Over four. And I'm going from two to one. I'm not going to go back to X's because I made these U's. If I had not made these U's, then I would have to go back to X's. But I made them U's. So my integral is U to the fourth over eight. And I have to plug in my numbers two and one. Two to the fourth is 16 over eight minus one to the fourth is one over eight. And that gives me 15 eighths. Now, what a lot of people forgot to do on their quiz was check their answers. This is a definite integral. I can check this. Look, if I go back to y equals and I put in x parentheses x squared plus 1 cubed, putting in my original problem, I do a zoom 6. I want to know what's the area now. So I go second, calculate, and I go down, oops, second, trace, I go down to my number 7, my lower limit is 0, my upper limit is 1, and it tells me that area is 1.875. Well, what do you think 1.875 is? Well, if I change it into a fraction, it's 15 over 8 right? We can check these things. If you have time, you should. Okay, looking at example two. <coughs> can I just multiply this out? Yes or no? No. So I'm going to have to do a u sub. What will u equal? What's du? What's the derivative? 1 dx, right? Well, here's my dx. That dx just gets replaced with a 1 du. Here's my x plus 2. That's my u. What's it getting raised to? 1 half. So I replaced this now. I've taken care of those two things. What's the problem, though? I still have an x. So what would x be in terms of u? U minus 2, I gotta squeeze that in there. I didn't leave enough room. So right now that was an X, but I could replace that X with a U minus 2. Now I want to change these numbers so that I never have to go back to X's again. This was an X, but what is negative 1 plus 2? Plug in 2 for X. What do we get? 4. So now, this is my problem. I'm going to distribute this, because I can. It's u to the 3 halves minus 2u to the 1 half du. To integrate, I have to add 1, multiply by the reciprocal. I have to add 1, multiply by the reciprocal. Oops, 4 thirds. It's a little tough to plug in these numbers, but it's not horrible. I plug in 4. This is my root. What's the square root of 4? 2. What's 2 to the fifth? 32 times 2 is 64 fifths minus plug 4 in here. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 to the third is 8 times 4 is 32 minus Plug in 1, square root of 1 is 1, the 5th is 1, that's 2 fifths. Plug in 1, square root of 1 is 1, to the 3rd is 1, that's 4 thirds. At this point, you can plug it into your calculator, but I'm going to simplify a little more. 64 fifths minus 2 fifths I can do. That would give me 62 fifths. Negative 32 thirds minus a negative would be plus 
That's going to be minus 28 thirds. And I'm going to just plug this into my calculator. So I get 62 fifths minus 28 thirds is this. I'm going to math bracket 46 over 15. Let's say I finish early on my quiz. I'm going to go back here and check this just to be sure. Shh, watch. So I'm just going to make sure that that answer was right. I'm going to do second trace. Calculate that integral from negative 1 to 2. And it gives me 3.066. So I know that my answer was correct. Okay? Remember, this part is actually a negative area because it's under the curve, and that's positive. But overall, that's what the area is that we're talking about. Okay? <laughs>